All right. In case anybody shows up, I know this is last minute, but I figure there's probably a few of you guys out there uh, who might be interested in seeing uh, the most powerful laser I've ever had in the shop. This is one pass, half inch birch plywood. So uh, I'm gonna give it a minute for everybody to get here. So if you're watching the replay, you can kind of skip past this part, but uh, let's go wait and see if anybody shows up because I am excited about this. I've been waiting on this for a minute. So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna just play around with it. And if anybody was curious about the machine, I'll let you know what my first impressions are. Uh, I will tell you this, that so far, uh, Adam Stack has fixed most every complaint I've heard about their machines. So if nobody shows up, we'll just sit here and uh, <laughs> play with a laser. That's what I'm doing anyway. So uh, we'll give it a few minutes. Like I said, I know this was spur of the moment, last minute. What's up, Jeff? How are you, sir? Uh, probably going to be a small group. It's kind of last minute, guys, but I have been working my rear end off since I got home. I have put the new Atom Stack A70 together. I have retrofitted it for the enclosure. I've got my auto air hooked up to it. I've got it working like a champ. And in case you missed it, I can now drop half inch birch plywood in one pass with a diode laser, which <laughs> I never, never would have believed it. And that's that's just guessing at the speed. Uh, but if you guys want to see it, uh, that's something we can do because I've, I've actually still got a piece of half inch birch in there. Uh, that's the material I used on the baseball bases as well as the bird, the bat house. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, but we'll, we'll go over a few of the things uh, that I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, Y'all know I've had a long history with Adam Stack. Uh, this is probably my fifth Adam Stack machine that I've ran. Uh, not counting Aitzer, because Aitzer, I think Aitzer was a spring off of Adam Stack, but I didn't, I didn't like some of the stuff that they did. I like the Adam Stack machines better. Uh, Jeff, he, he was trying to get me to wait, but I, I can't. I've been waiting on this machine since before the new year when they told me, "Hey, we're going to send you one," and, uh, and so, and I've got jobs lined up. I've already got stuff lined up for tomorrow night that I've got to be working on, and so. It was raining tonight. I wasn't going to do any of the other stuff that I had planned, so I figured, why not? Uh, we'll get in here and get it done. But just to go through the list of things, if you're wondering about this machine, uh, I'm gonna, I've, I've been, as I've been putting it together, first of all, the assembly was surprisingly easy. I figured it would be more complex, being that this machine has so many more advancements than the X40. I mean, I love my X40, don't get me wrong, but the X40 is like a stripped-down F-150. The... A70 is, the A70 Pro is the Lariat. Like, guys, it's got everything. It's got the heated seats with the massager. I mean, it's everything. Uh, they did not leave anything out of this machine that, that, I, that I would want. So I'm going to go through the list for you. First of all, the big upgrade that Adam Stack has never done. I know the Acer machines tried it, and they failed. I didn't like that. The way it worked, it was all janky, and it just caused problems. Uh, but... This machine has a working Z-axis that you can set a Z-offset, whether up or down. If you want to go out of focus up or out of focus down, you can move the focus. Uh, you can actually navigate up and down with the machine, uh, the whole nine yards. It operates great from light burn. The only disappointment I had when I was installing the machine is they didn't already have a configured file, like a, a you know just a light burn file that you can bring in that had all these cool settings in there, so I had to build it. Uh, but if anybody gets one, I will be saving. Once I get through putting everything in my machine, as far as all my, my locations and stuff, I will be sharing that with you guys. But, uh, but yeah, the Z-axis works great. Uh, I know a lot of y'all are big sticklers about noise and machines that are noisy. The only problem I see me having with this machine, because I don't know, can y'all hear that? No, you can't, because it doesn't make any noise when it's not engraving. Uh, the only problem I see with that is I'm going to forget and leave it on because I'm not used to it being that quiet. The Atom Stack X40 is way, way louder. I mean, you just turn it on and you can hear it. Uh, this guy is really, really quiet. Uh, so far, cutting, I'm getting clean drops. 
Oh, and waiver. My very first power speed test I did, which was the one I put on the Facebook post, was this one, and that was running their Atom Stack Air Assist, which did okay. But y'all know I don't like the run of the mill Air Assists. So once I got it in the enclosure, I hooked it up to my Air Assist, did a couple more speed and power tests. Uh, still getting around 37, 38 if I if I play around with the focus a little bit. Uh, but then once I got got it in there, got comfortable with it, I went and I tuned the air assist and got the air assist working like it's supposed to. So now uh, it's making some really clean cuts. But just to give you guys an idea, we're gonna flex on some uh, <laughs> we're gonna flex on some half inch birch plywood. This is cabinet grade half inch birch. All right. Usually when I'm making projects, like I've been making a lot of these baseballs here lately. Uh, the baseball uh, home base for people. I've been having to cut them on the CNC because it's, it's half inch birch. You can't cut that with a laser, right? <laughs> Wrong. So I'm going to swap y'all guys over to screen share. And I've got a camera feed set up to where I can show you both the screen as well as the enclosure. And we're fixing to, uh, we're fixing to do some one pass drops on half inch birch plywood, guys. So uh, let me see if this cues up like it's supposed to. Uh, there we go. All right, so as you can see, the machine is on, uh, and y'all hear the noise, right? All right, so I'm going to frame. Uh, one thing that I will tell you too, guys, is with this machine, uh, let me move it. Let me move it up a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to my move tab, and I'm going to move this thing up, uh, let's say 50 millimeters toward the front just to get it out more of that hole. A little more. All right. So as you can see, the machine's just kind of sitting there. Uh, so assuming that I hadn't already cut the uh, set the focus, I go over here to my macros. Now I had to add this macro. Like I said, they didn't it didn't come packed away for me. I had to fix this. Watch the machine up at the camera up there. So now my focus is set. All right, I've got this little cut right here. I'm going to move this guy over here. Uh, try to get the machine back where you can see it, and I'm going to frame that for you. This one does also have the little red pointer laser. I'm going to frame one more time just to make sure. And currently, I'm using the red pointer. Oh. Uh, let me see if I can update my camera lay. I think I moved the piece. I did move the piece. Let's fix this say because it was not framing where it was supposed to be. So let me reframe. Uh, but right now I'm using the little red flame, uh, red laser that's on the side of it. I don't know if you can see it at the camera, but it does have the crosshair. It's pretty. It's, it's pretty awesome. I did take the uh, little protective shield off mine as usual. All right, and so this is where the Z axis comes into play. All right. I'm going to run this at six millimeters a second because I know this will work. Uh, I just did it a minute ago. I've got air assist turned on, one pass. I've got the Z offset set to dig in five millimeters deeper than the surface of the material. That's where a Z offset uh, and an addressable Z axis comes in handy is because just like with a CNC, basically, it doesn't move as it, I mean, it moves one direction at a time, but it will, it will take that focus that I just set and it'll subtract five millimeters from it and move that into the material. So we've got that up there and uh, I'm going to swap you over to the enclosure so you can see the full view of the enclosure and I'm going to send it to the uh, machine. So here we go. You see the machine squat. It squats down, which is lower in that Z axis, that five millimeters. Uh, what that does is instead of the point of focus being on the surface of the material, the point of focus is now five millimeters deep inside that material which i haven't tried it without dropping the focus i just figured with a half inch piece of material uh the focus would need to be dropped uh i haven't tried it without it so it may even work without that but i'm gonna leave the camera on so nobody knows i'm not doing any hinky stuff here oh i did not turn the exhaust on Woo, hang on All right, there you go, guys. 
<laughs> Half inch birch plywood. Cabinet grade. This is ridiculous. This is insane. Uh, this is insane that I can now cut half inch birch plywood. I haven't tried anything thicker. What do y'all think? Y'all want to try anything thicker? What, what do y'all think? <clears throat> but I've, I've successfully two, two cuts in a row. Now, there is some black on it, so you're going to have to wipe that down, definitely, uh, after cutting it. But, I mean, you, we just cut through half inch thick material. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that is, uh, that is ridiculous power. So let me go over here in my scrap pile, see what else we got. All right. So I found myself a piece of oak over there. Uh, no way it's cutting through oak, right? No way. Let's see here. Uh, 18 millimeters or for you guys that like to get it the other way, uh, 0.71 inches. So 18 millimeters, solid oak. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, yes, this is some of this is some of the oak that I that I've cut off the mill. So this is this is genuine oak, Chilton County oak. So let's see. I don't know. I haven't tried oak. I was I was my, like it blew my socks off when I was able to knock holes in half inch thick uh, uh, birch. But here we go. 0. 0.71 inch oak. So let's put that in there. Uh, like it laying right there in the middle. And I'll swap you guys over to the multi view. Up, oh, where'd my light burn? When to go? There we go. All right, so uh, I have calibrated my camera. I did that just a few minutes ago. Uh, so camera should be pretty accurate. Uh, before I go over this piece of material, the one thing that I am gonna do is I'm gonna move that laser head up just to make sure we don't slam it into my material then i'm gonna move the laser up oh 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 somebody forgot home i moved the laser head by hand didn't I? that's a no-no don't do that don't move the laser head by hand okay now i think we're good All right, so over the top of the material, I'm going to focus. All right, focus is set. I'm going to use that same power setting, uh, six millimeters a second. Uh, see, this is a little bit thicker, so we'll go six millimeters down on the Z-axis. I haven't tested to see when it hits. Maybe it doesn't. So let's frame. All right, and uh, here we go. That's six millimeters a second, 100% power, running air assist. Now, I am using my shop air, and I have tuned it for this machine. So, uh, the results were very similar as far as the cutting speeds with other materials before I put it in the enclosure, but I didn't want to use the uh, standard. I'm going to get some of that smoke out of there. I didn't want to use the standard uh, pump in my enclosure, so I made myself a pigtail. I'm running off of the, the output from the machine to one of my relays. And let's see how that did. All right, so one pass is not gonna be adequate for that. <laughs> Not at all. So let me update my overlay again here. Move my little cut down. I'm gonna try to line that back up. And I'm gonna set it to two passes this go around. See if I can get through it. I think it will. I honestly think that it will with two passes. Oh, and by the way, 
all these folks that talk about cameras are useless and they don't work and you shouldn't use them, <laughs> pay attention to the video. I saw it. I saw it going through the material. Did y'all see that? Okay. I'm just asking a little too much of it. <laughs> it made it through, but it would take, I'm going to say three passes to get through this. Oh, this is some very dense, hard oak. So, since I've already scorched it all the pieces, uh, let me uh, let me try again. We'll set it for three passes this time. Cut that corner right there. Cuts in layers. Uh, three passes. I probably could go slower than six millimeters a second, but guys, that is a personal rule that I have. Uh, to avoid fires. So here we go. Going back with uh, six millimeters a second, three passes. The Z axis adjusting down when I add that to, uh, Z offset to it takes it just a second. It moves the machine, the, the head moves down before it starts engraving. So that's why when it moves over there, it kind of takes it a second. I don't know if you can see uh, whether or not, but when it, when, it, when it cuts that cut, it's gonna move down and then when it gets through, it's gonna raise back up before it moves. So that little piece that you see to the left right there of the, that's, that's actually the Z probe. I kind of wish it didn't dangle as much, but it's actually about even with the tip of the laser. And I have taken the cover off of mine. If I left the cover on there, it barely sticks out below the cover. But I, I kind of, especially for video purposes, prefer it be off. So I took it off when I put it in the enclosure. And I do have fire suppression on standby, just in case, because this is insanely thick material to be trying to cut with a diode laser. So... But it is, uh... All right, let's see what happened. All right, so, other than that one little piece of knot right there, this thing's kinda hot. <laughs> other than that one little piece of knot, and it's fairly flat. It doesn't have a whole lot of like cavities in the middle of it or anything. I don't see any glowing embers uh, in there. Let me get a rag, see if I can wipe it off. See what it would look like. So yeah, I mean, this is not something that I would recommend cutting with a laser on a daily basis by any means, but with this machine, if you wanted to do this, you can. Uh, now, definitely gonna wanna wipe the soot off of it because it does generate a lot of soot doing that. I'm trying to get it to where you can see the material because you know, most lasers when you're trying to make thick material especially oak it wants to uh, it wants to burn the inside of it and like make it look like charcoal and this is uh, like I said that's on the there you go so done a pretty pretty clean cut and like I said that's almost three quarter inch thick oak so not terrible at all turn this fan off fan is uh, a little noisy but 
Yeah. So in the event that you decided that you did want to cut some three quarter inch oak with your laser, uh, if it was something small, you, you can. <laughs> Not really advisable, but you can. So I think I want to do a speed and power test on this just to see what it'll do. All right, back to the overhead or the camera. Ah, light burn. All right, so updating my overlay, which I'm doing a power test. So uh, let's just do my own little power test here. Uh, let's try small circles and let's just walk it up. All right, so it's not exactly a circle. Do a 20 millimeter circle. And since I know it'll do it at six, let's go to eight. Let's jump it up and go back to one pass. All right, and this is, uh, like I said, this is at half inch birch. So let me frame it. I did update my picture, didn't I? Yeah, I did. All right, we're good. Nope, eight's too much. All right, updating my overlay here. I'll move that over here on this other corner. And wait a minute, I had to Z offset at six. Eesh. Let's go back to five. All right, I'm gonna move this down to seven millimeters a second. Frame it up. All right, sending it. Now, guys, it looks like six millimeters a second is the magic number. Man, I got lucky earlier. No doubt. Let me change that back to four. All right, let's put that right there. Oh, wait a minute. Stand by, guys. I, rookie mistake. Just realized what I did. I didn't set the focus. So I'm gonna need to move that machine over there over that material right quick. Cause I'm operating off the focus for that three quarter material. Uh, focusing. All right, now let me cut. Somebody probably told me I didn't set the focus, didn't you? Ah, oh, yep. Loads of bacon actually commented. You get a prize, loads of bacon. I didn't. I wasn't looking at the screen. I was looking at light burn. So now let's walk it back up. So now that I've got the appropriate focus, I'm going to move it to uh, seven millimeters a second. And we'll run it again. Wow, kind of missed that one a little bit, guys. My bad. All right, let me see if it fails. Not getting the clean drops I was getting. Let's move that on over to the material. That's why I missed it. So let's move it over to material and cuts and layers. Let me go up to eight on this one here. Oh, wrong camera. 
We'll go to eight millimeters a second, 100% power. Cheat the focus down, six millimeters. Now that I got the focus set right. I need to find out how low I can go without that little leg hitting. I'll find out when my material flies across there. When I... All right, let's see if it did anything at eight. Now it looks like seven is going to be our go-to on that, guys. So seven millimeters a second on that. So still not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the machine's quiet. Now my exhaust, not so much. But see, watch this. I mean, like, I got the mic where it's like right here beside the, uh, right here beside you guys. And watch this. Yeah, that's all you hear. I'm fixing to see, let me see how far I can go down with my focus without uh, that leg hitting. So I'm going to put it in three millimeter increments and lower it and see how far down I can go. Because it's showing me right now. Oh, wrong button. So about 15, looks like. About 15 millimeters is all you're going to get on a down travel before it gets too close for that little foot. So, but... Uh, now, I will say, me and Steve talked about it a lot, uh, how some of the machines and some of the settings make all the difference in the world. Uh, this machine is one of them that's where it homes at in the front up there and i don't like that so what i do is i go in here and i create me a location called park and that allows me to send that machine back in that back left corner and i also have it set to go back there after it finishes the job so uh just just you know little uh fyi uh engraving wise i haven't done a lot of testing with the engraving because Let's face it, this machine strong suit is going to be cutting rather than engraving. Uh, but the build, guys, I mean, it, it's it got four screws that come in from the outside that holds the legs together. It's got two that come in from the other side. Uh, instead of the quarter-inch belts, they went with like half-inch belts on this guy. Uh, the Z-axis is similar to the one that was on the Acer, but it works differently. Uh, so I'm really, really... Uh, Really happy with the way it works. Uh, so far, I don't see I, I don't I don't see any negatives so far. Uh, I was really when they first mentioned this machine and everybody's talking about oh there's a 70 watt coming out. I know me and Steve both were like dude I'd like to get a hold of the one of those and I, and I hate it Steve I couldn't wait on you man I mean the, it you know how long we've been waiting <laughs> and. Uh, so I came home today. I've got, I'm, I'm going to do a review video install and, you know, assembly and all that. Uh, I've got a lot of the video already captured from that. Uh, the machine, when it, when it came out of the box, I mean, it was relatively, relatively easy to put together. Uh, I think the whole assembly probably took me 30 to 45 minutes, but that was me going over the belts, making sure I had them tension the way that I wanted them. Trying to go along with what they said in the book at the same time. Uh, the instructions were really well thought out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're done. The only thing, like I said, the only thing that I was kind of disappointed with was the fact that they did not include uh, a light burn, a, a pre-configured light burn setup file for it. But it may be because it's, seriously, because it's so new uh, that they haven't. And, I, you know, I don't know. It wasn't that hard. It didn't find it automatically with light burn, but it does use the same uh, driver and everything that the uh, X40 uses. It's that CH340 driver, so that wasn't a big deal. The uh, controller on the front of it, I don't know if y'all can, how well can y'all can see that? No, you can't see it at all now. But the controller on the front of it is, uh, let me get my other little camera out. 
the controller on the front of it has got a button on there also that you can set the focus using that button. Oh, uh, and I used it to start with until I finally got it set up and I went in, read through the manual and found in the manual where it told you how to go in and set the, uh, or what the code was for the home, which is the same as a lot of the older machines that we've, we've dealt with, which was the ESP 500 in brackets. And that makes it, that makes it set the focus. So I just wanted to get on here and apologize to Steve. <laughs> Also, uh, I'm sorry, Steve, but you know, if you, if yours had came in first, you'd have been the same way, but, uh, it was, uh, I've been waiting on it for a while and my plan, I knew that as long as it did what I wanted it to on my testing table over here, uh, I knew I was going to be, uh, setting it into an enclosure. And so I went ahead and got the enclosure set up for it and, uh, I'm gonna swap y'all over and show you what I got going here. And I'm gonna try to stay close to my microphone. I wonder if this thing will let me go landscape, will it? Oh, yes, it does. All right, so as you can see, it's got quite a few, woof. It's got quite a few cables that come out of it right there. But there's the controller. And luckily for me, I built my enclosure just big enough. Um, and I've already got a jig set up for it. Uh, the legs on the machine are trapped, so it can't go anywhere. I used my universal jig kit that I made that works with pretty much any machine that has square or round legs. Uh, and I mounted the uh, the jig locking kit back there. Took the Did take the, the uh, cover off of it. And, of course, I've already got it piped in through my automatic air. And there's y'all's observation camera that y'all been using. So I didn't have to do anything major to my enclosure other than I did stain it uh, with some red stain to give it a little bit of a red color. That was kind of, you know, it needed a, it needed a, a little bit of a fix up. It was kind of, uh, it's kind of in bad shape. So anything particular y'all want to see, let me know. Uh, <laughs> it's bad enough you opened it today, but now you went live right after I posted my video too. What? What video? Well, hey, what video is it, Steve? I haven't been watching YouTube, dude. But I've been playing with this guy. What do you What do you want me to say? I'll t I will. Hey, everybody, do you promise to go watch Steve's video after the live's over with and give it two big thumbs ups? Let's do that. Let's Let's give Steve a thumbs up. You can go. You can go give him that thumbs up now and comment. Give him a, Give him a thumbs up and a comment since he's he's upset about the views. So, Steve, I didn't know. All right, I didn't know. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Steve's been, Steve's been a little, uh, you know, he's been a little, been a little, uh, <laughs> he's been a little touchy today. I guess I have hurt his feelings. I'm gonna have to give him a hug when he gets down here, guys. So just go ahead and get ready. I'm gonna give him a big bear hug when he gets here, and I'll, I'll try to make sure I got that on video, so I can show it to y'all guys. That'll be my apology hug for him. But yeah, what video did you put out, Steve? You ain't gonna put it in the comments. I gotta go look. Uh, Ventare. Let's see what. You, oh, oh, your LP video. All right, look. I'm gonna go on gear. When I use lizard for the first time. <laughs> that ain't Steve. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a thumbs up right now, Steve. And I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna do you one better, Steve. Here you go, everybody. There you go. Y'all make sure y'all go. Watch Steve's video. Make sure you give him a thumbs up. Uh, you, you can just, I don't know. You can just tell him, hashtag Clack has cool toys or something. I know. <laughs> because I can remember a time or two that Steve got his machines before I did. And, you know, he, he, he did kind of pick at me a little bit. I'm not trying to hold a grudge. Uh, I'm not trying to retaliate. But there have been, there have been times, guys. Like, he keeps bringing up his LP2 because he knows I don't have one. So, yeah. A pint of steak. Well, well burn car print, that, that's a long name. Uh, I've actually got some pretty cool stuff planned for him. Uh, I plan on letting him learn about sawmilling, uh, bush hogging. We're going we're gonna to get Steve, we're going to get him, we're going to officially get him out in the country doing some country stuff. I am going to buy him a hot hamburger and some chicken livers. Uh, so I might even get him a steak if he stays long enough. Uh, it depends. 
but he's got to get a, a hot hamburger for lunch one day and some chicken livers. That's that's got to happen. But any questions on the machine? Because I know you guys have been asking me, when are you going to get it? Uh, what's it look like? What's the date on it? It is officially here. I have mine, and Steve's is somewhere uh, on a truck somewhere. So <laughs> Steve will have a video before too long. But <clears throat> I had a bunch of other stuff lined up this week that I really didn't want to put off those days and didn't want to do it today. And then this thing was sitting here calling my name. So, well, it's it's going to be work, but it's going to be fun. We're going to do some fun stuff. Uh, we will be, both of us, will be at May May's uh, open house on April the 20th uh, here in Clanton. So if you're reasonably close and you just want to make a trip up towards Clanton, uh, we plan on being there most of the day. Uh, so hopefully... We won't miss anybody, <clears throat> but if, if anybody's planning on coming up, if you'll send me an email, let me know. Uh, we'll be sure to we'll be sure to make it. You know, make sure we're there when you show up, even if I had to drive back over if we have to go visit with somebody else. Because I got some other folks that I want to introduce Steve to up here as well. But we we might if he stays more than just the twentieth, we may have an opportunity to do that uh, some other time. But Steve. Uh, I hope you're getting plenty of likes and thumbs up, guys, on, on Steve's video. So I didn't I didn't mean to hurt you, Steve. I'm sorry. Apparently, apparently you're gonna be uh, full of country cooking, and appear, uh, 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 according to them, you're gonna have to drink a lot too while you're here. So, but anyway, guys, that is uh, that is what I've been doing right there. That guy is awesome. Uh, I really, really do look forward to using it. I was going to do a quick little engrave right quick so that you guys can see what it looks like. Let me uh, let me throw something in there because I'm kind of curious myself what the... Where's my test files? So I've got some... Hang on, let me, let, me, let me swap you down here to the screen. So let me go over here to my testing folder on my library. And if it'll load... All right, so we got the Clack Shack 1984. We can do that. See how it turns out on a piece of Luon. Uh, camera control, update, overlay. I haven't done a, I haven't done an engrave test yet. Hmm, that's not going to turn out well without an engrave test. Uh, yeah, may have to wait. Uh, do have a z-axis curve test we could do if y'all want to do that. Uh, that's uh, if my layers aren't all messed up. Let me see what they set to. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna do that because some of my some of my engrave some of my layers are not set up properly for that. So I guess I just need to do a. 40 watt engrave test. So I'll take my 30 watt. No, 40 watt engrave test. So I'll take my 40 watt engrave test and I will, yeah, we'll run that. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, wait a minute. It's got that weird thing going on. How did that happen? I don't know. All right. Bidirectional field, 0.27, all at one same time. Save that. All right, so we'll let that run for a minute. Oh, doop. Uh, gotta get used to that focus. I hadn't had one that had focus in so long. I have forgot how to use it. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Du, 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 du. Oh, wrong one. That ought to work. Ah, shit. Ah. Oh, me. Let me get off of that for a second. I got to quit stopping machines and then 
trying to send stuff. Not paying attention to what I'm doing here. Let me flip my material around a little bit. All right, so update my overlay. Let's walk through the steps here. Move the machine over to material. Hang on. Move the machine over to material without stopping it. All right. Auto focus. All right, now material test. All right, finally. Got my head out of my rear end. Uh, yeah, the autofocus, it has basically the way it's set up. It's got a little probe. Uh, you should be able to see it. See that little piece sticking down in the, the back of the module right there towards the left of where the laser is? There's a little bar that sticks down right there. That bar runs up through there, and it is on the other end of it, there is a limit switch, basically. So what it does is when I hit that Z uh, set focus, it raises it all the way to the top so that it knows where the furthest reach is. It bumps off of that limit switch there, and then it comes down until that probe touches the material and it triggers that other switch. When it does that, it knows where the surface of the material is, and then it moves up from the surface of the material to whatever they've got set for the focal point, and that's where it locks down, and it basically stays there unless in the layers you add a Z offset up or down and then it'll raise up or go down uh, from cut to cut to cut so but yeah so it's it's, it's getting smoky in there hang on I gotta turn some air on but yeah I haven't done a lot of in, uh, engraving tests with it so this will be the first one I've done, actually. So what y'all think? Is it, is, it, is it pretty awesome or what? Oh, and the longer's sitting over there because I'm out of places to hang it. I got a buddy of mine supposed to be coming to pick up a machine. And uh, that's going to clear up me a spot to hang the longer because I don't want to get rid of it. But I don't need it at the moment. Uh, Thomas... Jury's still out on that. I mean, the, 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 those are kind of apples and oranges. This machine's 500 by 400, which is substantially larger than the, the MK2. I don't have this enclosure set up to do tumblers or anything like that. That's some of the things that the MK2 out of the box, because if you had this machine and you didn't have an enclosure like I have, you would have to build it, and you'd have to buy the camera and the exhaust, and all the other stuff. So that's kind of, to me, that's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. Now, as far as cutting, it'll it'll run circles around the 30 watt, but it should. I mean, it's a 70 watt diode, so it, it should cut better than the uh, the 30. I mean, that's, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, a Lamborghini ought to outrun a Ford Tempo. It's got a bigger motor. Uh, so, <clears throat> It, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing projects on a regular basis that you need 500 millimeters of workspace, then yeah, I mean, it's gonna beat it on that. But if you're needing to do tumblers on a frequent basis, that that is already set up for tumblers. I don't even have it set to where I can put a chuck or anything in this enclosure. It's just got, if you look, that honeycomb, there's a false floor in that enclosure. That honeycomb is actually over a void uh, and there's a metal pan underneath there and then up towards the left there are uh, little ports that go into that false compartment underneath the honeycomb and everything and pull the smoke out that way that's why that that honeycomb is actually flush with the surface of the, the where the legs are sitting they're, they're the same level uh, that's a 500 by 500 honeycomb luckily I already had it in there that looks a little dark I may have to go way faster. 
Oh, it's chewing through like an inch and a, a millimeter and a half of that material. So yeah, that's gonna be way too slow. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have to run a lot higher speeds. Uh, there again, loads of bacon. The A70 and the P2 is uh, is is two totally different creatures. Uh, Y'all seen the earrings that I cut out of acrylic last night with the P2? You can't cut. The, the 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 diodes are still limited to the fact that they're blue diodes and there's some materials they cannot interact with such as clear things and translucent things uh you can cut some colors of completely non-transparent or opaque uh acrylics black being the the best one oh yeah steve i messed up I, like i stopped it a while ago because i didn't set the focus and then i forgot to rehome it and yeah i've, I've messed up <laughs> And I've got to get used to that that autofocus again. I, I had it at one point with one of the other machines, and then I got away from it. But I will say, up until this machine, the Niji 4 Max had the best Z-axis of any machine that I that I had. But I'm, I think I'm I think I'm digging this one. It's going to take me a little while to make sure that I go through the routine of setting everything. But I, I think I'm I think I'm digging this one. But this one definitely has a bigger square work area than the P2 does. But like I said, there again, this is a diode. It's not. It's a blue diode. It's not a CO2. So it's going to be limited to the same things as every other blue diode is. Because no matter how much power you throw at it, the physics of light interacting with certain materials is still not going to let this thing uh, cut that stuff. But... It's, 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 it's pretty nice. Wonder will it fit on a OLM2? If what will fit? Oh, I can tell you right now, there's no other machine in my shop that has a 36 volt power supply, except for this one. Uh, this one has a 36 volt power supply. It has a line that comes out of it. And oh, Steve, when you get yours, they've got stickers all over it, but mine was set to 220 on the power supply. So make sure you check it before you plug it in. Luckily, the stickers caught my attention and I checked it. It was set to 220 from the factory. I put it on 120 before I hooked everything up. But it has a 36 uh, volt output, a 24 volt output, and then the machine itself has a 12 volt output that runs the air assist. So you've got 12, 24, and 36 volt circuits in this one machine, which is I've never seen before. Uh, the power brick is like that big and it's got a cooling fan built into it. Uh, so I had to kind of modify the way I set everything up. I've got it sitting on top of my laptop or my computer underneath my table because it's, it's, it's big. Uh, see if I can show you. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That right there is the power supply for this beast. It's got cooling fans and everything. Look at all that dust. But that is the power supply for this machine. And there's a sticker right there that tells you, check over here and make sure it's on the appropriate voltage. But it's got two outputs that go into the machine. One's 36 volts and one's 24. They've got some little yellow tags on them, but you may wanna, I don't know why they didn't put two different size connectors on those things, uh, but they didn't. So pay attention to that also. Uh, now the 12 volt the 12 volt output is what runs the power the air assist so With my enclosure I had a 24 volt relay in the enclosure operating the air assist But luckily I got a toolbox and I had extras and I had a 12 volt relay in there for air assist as well So I put the 12 volt air assist relay in took the 24 out and then I made myself a little pigtail for this machine so I didn't have to cut any wires and I plugged it up to my shop air and then tuned the shop air to get it to do like I want it to. Let's see where we at over here on this uh, on this thing. Oh, that's way too much power. I think I see light through the engrave. <laughs> yeah, that's way too hot. But this is switchable from 35 to 70. Uh, it's got a little switch on the side of the uh, module like the, like the MK2 does. Uh, I haven't haven't tried it turned down at all. 
But I wasn't going to stay too long, guys. So uh, coming up on 9.30. And if, uh, if you haven't already, uh, I did drop a link to Steve's video over there. Y'all go check that out and, uh, you know, give him a, a hashtag or something to remember us by in that video. Since he's mad at me because I interrupted his flow on this video. Or you can even, you, you can even like, go ahead and open it and just, like, give it a like right now. But, Steve, any guesstimate on when you'll have yours out of the box? Maybe tomorrow? Maybe. Glasses. Ew. All right, so Steve's gonna have his tomorrow. And uh, hang on just a second here. Check it out. But yeah, my new enclo or my, my old enclosure got a little bit of a facelift. But yeah, y'all go check that video out. Watch, uh, I'm gonna watch it before I go in the house, Steve. I'll make you that deal. I'll watch it and like comment about your hair or something like you've been doing in mine. Oh, uh, but but yeah, uh, Sunday night too, guys. Me and Steve are gonna have. Uh, uh, The Greg from STL Woodworking. I'm going to try to get the uh, thumbnail out, but if y'all have ever watched the guy or if you haven't watched him and you want to come in there and uh, see what it's going to be all about, this will be our last live before Steve makes his road trip. So that's going to be this coming up Sunday night. It'll be our last Sunday night live before Steve makes his road trip. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure to uh, to check back with us Sunday night for the for the live. But as far as I know, uh, the Atom Stack machine, for you guys that want to see the, uh, the specs, the, you know, all the geeky stuff, you can go over to Atom Stack's website and uh, check that out. I did put a link down below uh, that takes you to where the machine is. Uh, they've actually got them marked down right now, but they're still, they're still pricey. Uh, and I know me and Steve both got the A70 Pro instead of the Max because the Max was just way more laser than I needed. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. I'm 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 liking what I'm seeing with it. Uh, I haven't identified any like points of failure so far. <laughs> Anything that I see that I think is going to be a problem for anybody. Uh, and only time will tell as far as whether it's going to hold up or you know have issues or whatever they are uh they're also saying that you can cut 0.3 millimeter stainless steel sheet with this thing uh 25 millimeter acrylic 12 millimeter mdf 30 millimeter pine i didn't i didn't have any pine to try we'll have to try that one day uh, the uh air assist that it comes with is that that one that that me and steve have had before and it works pretty well like I said, it done a good job by itself, but I just, I didn't have room to mount the thing. And I don't like using those. I'd rather use my air assist in the shop here. Uh, according to this, it does have uh, automatic flame guard. I uh, haven't had a trigger and I just kind of surprising some of the stuff we've been cutting. Uh, it says it's, uh, of course it has an intelligent cooling system, which I guess means it cuts on and off instead of just running all the time. But it does, according to this paperwork, and everything I'm looking at, it does work with the uh, the chucks that me and Steve love so much, which I figured it would. I didn't know why they would reinvent the wheel on that. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's not a bad machine, guys. But I'm gonna let y'all, unless you got any questions or got anything you want to see or whatever with the machine, I'm gonna just keep playing with it. That's why I went ahead and put it in the enclosure because I plan on running the crap out of this thing for the next few days. I ran it. 
when I first got it put together on the bench just to make sure that it was going to work before I put it in the enclosure because you never know what could have happened in shipping or whatever. Uh, but I did a few speed tests on the table with it, and then it got smoky in here. So I was like, it's, it needs to go in an enclosure because it was generating crazy amounts of smoke. But so far, it's doing a, a, a really good job, guys. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to turn that thing off before I forget because it's so quiet. Like, there's no, there's no noise. Let me see what this uh, engraved looks like. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it almost engraved completely through the material, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to speed that up a lot. Like, if you want to emboss wood, uh, you can emboss it because, like, that's that's dug in right there, guys. And I was running air assist with it, too. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to play with the power settings for engraving. Definitely going to be higher than 225, or either I'm going to have to flip it down to 35 watts, one of the two. Uh, I don't want to do that because if I'm doing an engrave and a cut, I don't want to have to physically flip the switch. The 225, it's recessed in there pretty good, but nowhere near as much as it did down here at 150. At 150 millimeters, it it ate through probably half of this 4.5 millimeter material. So definitely a little more power than what I'm used to, even with the 40 watt. Uh, it is definitely... Definitely going to have to slow it up. Uh, good news is, though, all my squares are square. I don't see anything with the belts. Uh, these half-inch belts are something I'm not used to. Uh, I'm used to the quarter-inch belts that are on most every other machine in this shop, uh, other than a, the CO2. I think the I, th I think the X-Tool P2 has the half-inch belts, but this is the first open-frame diode that I've seen that had half-inch belts on it, uh, and they're they're massive compared to what I'm used to with the ten with the with the quarter inch belts. So, uh, but I'm assuming it's a heavier module, all that back and forth rapid movement without a bigger belt, the belts would probably stretch and, and it eventually break. So I'm assuming that's why they went with a bigger belt, but there you go. Uh, engraving is going to definitely be faster than 225. Well, definitely need to speed that up. So, uh, well, True Tech, well, with a ten watt, like I said, it's it's all a game of numbers. Uh, when when time is money, uh, you want faster. The faster you can go and get the job done, the better. Uh, especially when you're engraving a whole bunch of stuff. Like like here the other day, I don't know if you can see them. Uh, there's a pile right over there. You can see we get the rag on top of it. That's a pile of like 20 of those little uh, signs I had to do the other day, which I'm supposed to seal, but it won't quit raining here, and I don't want to take them outside and spray them uh, until it quits raining. Uh, so that's got me messed up. Past two days, it's been raining outside, and that is not the weather that you want to be outside spraying polyurethane around in. But... I'll let you know. Uh, like I said, Sunday night, we'll have more to talk about with it. I'm sure I'll be doing some more testing between now and then. So uh, run over and check out Steve's video. I'm going to do the same. Uh, go see what he's done with his uh, LP2 because I just don't like saying the name of the machine. But uh, until next time, guys, y'all be safe. And uh, like I said, check out the check out the machine if you want to see the numbers. Uh, between now and then, maybe I'll figure out some more ins and outs of it. But so far, it gets a thumbs up with me i'm very happy I'm, I, I'm very pleased with it and i now have adam stack on both sides got it. the x40 and the a70 so good deal but anyways y'all have a good one go check out steve's video that's where i'm headed so we can go watch steve's video together guys so see ya and y'all be good